board. A um, couple questions that I see, it says I cannot see anything. Um, I haven't shared my screen yet. There, now you guys should all be able to see something. So go ahead and if you can, um, in the chat or the question and answer, I want you to go ahead and just pop um, your name in, where you're from, just kind of introduce yourself a little bit. Um, that way I can kind of get to know you um, and it'll help me kind of move forward and also it'll help me know if you can see my screen and if you can hear me. So and go ahead and do that for me. Um, all right. We got people from all over the U.S. A couple of my friends that I've met with face to face before. Welcome. Some people that I've been to other sessions today. All right. All right. Welcome. 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 All right. Well, thank you so much for attending. Um, I hope, like I said earlier. Um, I, uh, I hope that you've gotten lots of information, lots of helpful, useful information today, and we look forward to um, continuing that all throughout the day. Uh, today's session, and this session is going to be on class flow desktop and um, using the instant whiteboard and the annotation tool in class flow desktop. So that's going to be what we're going to focus on. Now, let me finish checking, making sure everybody has audio. Okay, we are good to go. So, uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Jacob Preston. I'm a former elementary school teacher from Nashville, Tennessee. Um, my wife and I currently live in Chattanooga, Tennessee. I'm a part of the Classflow user engagement team. Um, and if you are interested in following me on Twitter, you can reach me at Classflow underscore Jacob. You can't really see that underscore because of that card. But that's my uh, Twitter handle. Feel free to follow me if you'd like. But um, yeah, so I'm going to give you a little, um, little teaching perspective on how I've used um, instant whiteboard and desktop annotation before. Um, I'm also, so part of my job is to travel around. Um, my region's major the, mainly the southeast, but I, I travel to different areas sometimes too. And to, uh, whether that's watch teachers teach or help engage them uh, in class flow. So I'm also going to give you some perspective on things that I've seen and hopefully give you something that you can take home with you and apply for your up, up and coming school year. I know some of you might start school next week. Um, some of you start, have another month to go. So it's kind of varying all across the board because we have people all over um, the world here on this WebEx. So yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started in with our webinar. So here's the first thing I need you to do. We are going to, I'm going to have you join the session on your own personal device. So it might get a little um, confusing. There's going to be times when you will navigate from an actual like Chrome web browser to my screen back and forth. So you're going to either switch from my screen to the web browser or back and forth. So you're going to have kind of the student view and my screen is going to be the teacher view. So if, kind of if you were to picture it, my um, WebEx screen is going to be the front of the classroom display and yours is going to be the student screen. So without, if, if for some reason you, you don't feel like logging in or um, you need, you want to um, just continue to watch, I'm going to log in to um, a student screen here. I'm going to do this. Let me do this. I'm going to do this in an incognito window. Demo.classflow.com slash student. Um, so the class code hasn't worked because I hadn't started yet. Um, I'm actually going to start the session now. So thank you for the reminder. Let me log in. Now, a couple things before I start I want to show you. Um, so the, the, the reason the wheel is gray is because I'm actually logged out. I'm in the logged out state of Classflow. If I go to log in here, and I, I type in my password. Now, my URL is demo.classflow.com. Yours might be classflow.com. Or if you have a tenant, what we call a tenant, um, that would be where you would put it right there. Um, there we go. Typed in the wrong password. So now you'll notice that, that the wheel now becomes orange. So the wheel goes from being gray to orange. 
And now, once I once the wheel turns orange, I have the ability to start a class. So I'm going to start what we call an ad hoc session. This is just kind of an on-the-fly session. My students don't necessarily need to have an account. They're just going to log in through their classo.com slash student and enter in that URL. So I can see that some of you are getting logged in. As you are getting logged in, I'm going to go ahead and show you this. I'm going to type in my Q class code, oops, QQ667X. I'm going to click join class. That's my name. All right. Now, I can see that I have, let's check here. 18 students that have joined the class so far. Now, I know there's a lot more than 18 people on this WebEx. So, like I said, if you want to just focus in on my screen, I'll navigate back and forth from the student card and the teacher card. So, you don't necessarily have to do that, and I don't want you to get lost. But if you want to participate, you're welcome to do that. So, as you can tell, if you're unfamiliar with ClassFlow and ClassFlow Desktop, it's a, it's a download that you get from ClassFlow.com. Um, if you have Promethean hardware, it's free to you. If not, then you uh, have a 90-day free trial where you either have to plug into Promethean hardware after that, or you can contact someone um, about getting it at a building level, at a district level. So if you have any questions about that, reach out to me, put it in the chat, and I'd be happy to get you in contact with someone from our sales team. Excuse me. So this is going to be the holding screen for the students. Um, I'm going to minimize this screen, the student screen, and I'm going to come back in here, and I'm going to kind of show you a little bit around um, the uh, actual wheel first. So when you get the class flow wheel, you have a couple different options. You have the ability to create new resources or upload resources from your computer. So you can convert file types, you can convert flip charts, you can convert PDFs, you can convert smart notebook files all into class flow lessons. You also can use desktop annotate, which obviously we're going to talk about today. Instant whiteboard, you have the screen capture where you can record videos um, if you would like. You have the settings cog where you can log in and connect and get help and support. If your students are connected, you can see your students connected. There's your send card and here is your interactive polling feature, which all of this we're going to cover. I just wanted to give you a brief overview at the start. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to start in an instant whiteboard session. So instant whiteboarding is named perfectly. That's what, it's, that's what it's designed to do. It's designed to be an instant whiteboard for you just to hop in and get rolling right off the bat with your students. It's great for the, the time in class where you might not necessarily have something specifically prepared, but you want to get rolling um, right off the bat. Maybe you're looking to, um, uh, maybe you're looking to, uh, review what you had talked about yesterday or anything like that. So the instant whiteboard is a great feature because you have a few different options. The toggle carousel here, when you use the instant whiteboard and the desktop annotate, it's going to create a continuous lesson for you. So you'll notice here in a second, as I start to write on this card down here, It'll show up in real time. Then if I wanted to add a new card, I can go there, and it's going to show up on the next card. So it's going to create a continuous lesson. Then when I'm done, if I want to exit and save the lesson, I can save it as what we call a .cfl file, meaning it's going to get saved into your class or in locally onto your hard drive, but it's a class flow lesson. So let's say that you have an instant whiteboard lesson, and you have a great idea, and you're, you're just going, and you're like, hey, I really like this. I want to use it for the next, uh, my next class, you can do that. Um, just go ahead and redirect everybody's attention. If you're not on the WebEx screen, go ahead and come back over to the WebEx screen. I'm walking you through the uh, instant whiteboard tools. Okay, so here's what I want to do. I want to start by putting in a text box. I want to start by putting in a question. How do you find the area of a triangle. How do you find the area of a triangle? Now, 
typically in class, if you ask something like this, you're going to have a bunch of hands shoot up. You're going to have um, uh, a couple kids that go like into their own shell. But here with ClassFlow, you can use this uh, instant whiteboarding to have it at the front of the classroom, but then you can also send this as what we call one of our word seed polls. So I can select what I want, and I can send it as a word seed poll. So now if you navigate over to your screen, oops, wrong one, bear with me. Now if you navigate over to your screen, you should see how do you find the area of a triangle. So go ahead and submit that answer for me. You're going to type it in. If you need help, I can go ahead and tell you it's area equals, oops, equals one half base times height. And submit that. This Google Chrome is acting a little funny right now. So here is the really cool feature. So I can, uh, oh, ask Jeeves, that's a great one. So let's say that you have this and you're bringing it to the front of the classroom. You can delete that if you wanted to, if you had an inappropriate answer. But a lot of you are saying area equals base times height or one half base times height. So you'll notice that these are the same answers, right? So I can group like answers if I wanted to, which is a great feature within ClassFlow. So, I'm using our word seed poll to demonstrate how you can engage your students through instant whiteboard. So, I'm going to go ahead and stop this poll. Now, you should notice your screen is a holding screen. I want you to go ahead and bring your attention back over to the instant whiteboard. So, we know this, that area equals one-half base times height. So. I'm going to use some of these tools and show you how this works. Let's see, area, using the pen tool here, bear with me, I have super messy handwriting, and I'm using my trackpad, so sadly if I had a pen and paper, it probably wouldn't look any better. All right, so area equals one half base times height. Now, I use the pen tool in Instant Whiteboard. A couple of cool things that you're going to notice throughout this is the Instant Whiteboard tools and the Desktop Annotate tools are all the same. You can use those um, what, regardless of which one you're using. So let's say that I write this with the pen tool, and I want to change this because obviously my handwriting is terrible. So I want to use our equation editor. So I can take this and I can select the equation editor. Oops, and I guess I was so messy that it wasn't able to recognize that. So typically what would happen, let me try that again. Bear with me. I'm going to come in here. We're going to erase everything. I think what happened was I put it too close into this text box, and so it couldn't recognize it. But let's try that again. Try and go a little quicker this time. Area. equals base times height divided by two. All right, let me get that, I'm gonna move that out of the way. That way I don't accidentally select that one. And then I'm gonna take my equation editor and I'm going to grab it, and because I didn't grab the whole thing, but in a perfect world where I wasn't tracking so so uh, messy, you would see that area equals one-half base, base times height, right? So that's what we know is the how to find the area of a triangle. Now, I'm showing you that to try and demonstrate our – I think what's happening is I'm not selecting the whole thing. So I'm showing you that to demonstrate our equation editor. Now, it's a little user error on my part because I'm not selecting the whole thing, but that's one of our tools when it comes to instant whiteboard. We have the equation editor. Now, also the same thing 
you have text recognition selector. So the nice thing about this, I've had people on these uh, webinars all day long that are from different areas, different countries around the world. You can change your text recognition selector um, if you want to. So it's great for maybe if you're an advanced AP uh, Spanish teacher or French and you want to teach your entire lesson in Spanish or French, you can do that as well. So that's what's really nice about the text recognition selector. The shapes tool is gonna be similar to any type of shapes tool that you've used before in any kind of lesson building software. We have different shapes options. You can um, change the color of them if you want. You can add, you can use the fill tool and change it. Awesome feature, very similar to what you guys are used to. Pen tool, I demonstrated that. Eraser tool, you can erase the entire annotation or you can change the thickness. Now you'll notice that the eraser tool doesn't erase over shapes and text. The eraser tool is for the, um, for the pen. So here are a couple of the um, tools that are new to Classflow Desktop. And if you've used Active Inspire before, you're probably familiar with these. So this is gonna be your protractor, ruler, compass, set square, graphing calculator, revealer, and spotlight. So here's what I wanna do. I wanna kinda of show you a little bit of how this would work in an actual lesson. And before I go to the, um, before I go to uh, the question and answer, I'm gonna try and uh, answer all your questions through this today. And if I don't get to them, I'm gonna have a time for um, question and answer at the end. So I'm opening up this PowerPoint, and this is a Mount St. Helens PowerPoint, right? So let's say here that I might get to a portion of this PowerPoint I'm teaching in the middle of the lesson. So Mount St. Helens erupted on May 18, 1980. The eruption uh, column rose over 80,000 feet and deposited ash in 11 different states. We know that it, was, it erupted just outside of Seattle. So let's say I get to this portion of my, um, my presentation and I might say, okay, hey, I want to highlight whatever portions, oops, it keeps kicking me out of there. I'm gonna end our session real quick because I don't need you to participate anymore. I might want to highlight the 11 states that I would think might, might have been covered in, um, in the Mount St. Helens eruption. Bear with me, sorry. This WebEx software is acting a little funny today. That. Delete that one. So we're gonna go with desktop annotate. Right there, and for some reason it's, so let me exit out of the PowerPoint view. I'll show you it from here. All right, so. You know, I have no idea why the software's kicking me out today, so I'm just gonna do this. We are going to reset it real quick. Bear with me, I'm sorry, this is a little bit of user error. I think everybody kinda had to, deal with this today. Some people had some trouble logging in. So I'm gonna exit out of this, this uh, whiteboard lesson real quick. I'm gonna exit out of this, exit out of here, and we should be good. All right, so let me make sure everybody's still connected. We're good to go. All right, so here's my Mount St. Helens lesson, right? So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna click desktop annotate, and now it should pull it up. There we go. All right, so let's say that I want to do this from the classroom. I can come in here and I can select a pen tool, and I mentioned this earlier. You're gonna notice that these tools are the exact same across the board. They're the exact same tools that we used um, for when I was demonstrating instant whiteboarding. But instead of using the pen tool, maybe I wanna use the highlighter tool. And maybe I wanna highlight in gray because of ash or something like that. So I might come in here and I might say, all right, let's highlight as a group the 11 states we think that Mount St. Helens would have erupted over. So I can do that, whole group in front of the class. 
if I wanted to. And you notice they get shaded in. It's really nice. I could change the width of this if I wanted to. So if I want to change the drawing style, you're going to notice that come down some. If you wanted to go in. Now, similarly to how I I sent this to uh, I sent this to you as a, as a uh, as a word seed problem earlier when I when I wanted to engage you, I could send this to my class as well if I wanted to. So I could send this to their screen and they could actually color this in. Um, you're going to notice once again I'm logged in to Classflow Desktop, I'm doing this all without being online. When I get online and my students are online, I can send them cards. So that's the powerful thing is that you can add cards and you can send and engage your students through the use of uh, Classflow Desktop. All right, so I shaded that in. I'm gonna come back into my PowerPoint here. And here's where I wanna do something that's pretty cool and it really highlights the ability to um, use desktop annotate in my opinion. So it says here, Mount St. Helens is one of the largest volcanoes in the United States. Before it erupted, it stood at 4,400 feet and almost six miles wide. So I want to come back in here and I want to take that desktop annotate and I want to take that screen capture of it, of Mount St. Helens. So I do that. And as I said earlier, this is a continuous lesson. So the next card in my screen is right here. So what do we know about Mount St. Helens? Well, we know, and I'm gonna go ahead and create a new card here. We know that it looks similar to what? A triangle. So let's say that I want, come in here and let's change Mount St. Helens, let's change it. Let's, uh, let's make it green. Maybe I want to get my pen tool, shade in a little bit of snow at the top, All right? So there we go. All right, here's Mount St. Helens. Okay. So. Here's Mount St. Helens, and we know it kind of looks like a triangle. But we also know from when I was demonstrating this earlier, the area of a triangle. Area of a triangle equals one half base times height. So if I know that, I can put that up on the screen. I'm gonna try and do this equation editor again, see if it cooperates with me. So now I can select the equation editor and area equals one half base times height. Well, we know because this is a continuous lesson, right, that I can scroll back in here and look at my desktop annotation and I know that Mount St. Helens was 4,400 feet tall and 31,680 feet wide. So here's the cool thing that I can do. I can now take this, and if I wanted to add a new card, I can throw the graphing calculator on there. And then I could bring this back to the front of the classroom and say, okay, area equals one half base times height. So 31,680 times 4,400 divided by two. On your graphing calculator, how, what is the area of Mount St. Helens as a triangle? So it's really cool to engage your students that way. You can build on what you already have. And you notice that it's a continuous lesson. So as I mentioned earlier, this is from my PowerPoint. I was able to shade into in the, the areas that the 11 states. I was able to pull my Mount St. Helens um, actual measurements. I was able to add an instant whiteboard session here where I could put the um, area of the triangle, label it, and I can get a marvelous art, art, artistic uh, drawing of Mount St. Helens. And then I can come in here and I can add from my instant whiteboard, I can add the, um, the Desmos graphing calculator. Now the graphing calculator is powerful because you think about how many of you might teach in uh, schools that are free and reduced lunch and how um, there's a lack of resources for teachers. I saw something, a video the other day about a teacher who was standing on the side of the road with a, 
cardboard sign collecting money uh, for her class for school supplies. You know, not everybody has money to buy a TI-83 calculator, TI-82 calculator, whatever different calculators they have. So that's what's powerful about having a Desmos calculator in Classflow. Now, if you guys were logged in and I had this session going again, I could send this to your device. So that's what's really cool. So <clears throat> for purposes of this, because I know you guys are dying to know, I'm going to toggle that carousel down. And I'm going to say, okay, area equals one-half base times height. If I come in here, so 4,400, 100 times 32. I think that's what it was, 32, uh, 30, I'll just round up and call it 32. How about that? 32,000, that equals, oh, didn't want to cooperate. User error, I guess. So, anyways, you notice how this is a continuous lesson working through here. And that's the one thing that I wanted to highlight with the desktop annotate and instant whiteboarding session is how you can continually use whatever you have. You know, there's no sense in reinventing the wheel. There's thousands of great resources out there for teachers. There's no sense in reinventing the wheel. I want you to be able to use what you have at your fingertips. So before I keep going, I'm gonna minimize this and I wanna pause and I'm gonna come back in here and I'm gonna look and take a second to look at the chat and the question and answer and make sure that some of these questions you might have that maybe I've already answered, some of them I can demonstrate again, but this way we can do this whole group and figure this out. So, all right, let's see here. Um, a couple different questions I've gotten. One question was how do you fix the hold screen so that um, it doesn't distract the students? One of the, um, just the, the strategies that I like to use, I like to typically go lids up, lids down. Um, so if, if I say lids down, the students lower their, their computer screens. If I say lids up, they bring them back up. That's also why we have that cascading landscape. And they, it rotates between those like four or five pictures. So that way, I mean, students become used to it and they don't just stare mindlessly into it. Um, uh, the class code is tied to the teacher, so that QQ67X, that's my class code, so when my students log in, they'll log in through that way. Um, I think I fixed the problem as far as the, the class code because I would started it. Um, as far as the, the, students, the student results go, so I had a bunch of questions asking about if you can access that data after the fact. Yes, you can. And we're gonna have a couple more sessions in polling. Actually, I have a polling in Classflow desktop session coming up after this if you'd like to join. And we'll kind of highlight a little bit more of that. I wanted to focus on the instant whiteboard and the uh, desktop annotate uh, portion of this. I didn't wanna go too much into the polling feature because I didn't wanna overload you guys and confuse people. <clears throat> Um, the poll results, you, you can access them after the fact. In the new release, um, you'll be able to save them on the card and you can look at them in real time. Um, to answer your question as far as the, uh, the Chinese character, I believe it does. You would have to go in there and check. We have uh, the different, um, in your settings, text recognition language settings, you can change it in there. So someone was asking if it would recognize a Chinese character. Let me come back in here and check the question and answer here now. All right, someone asked me to uh, demonstrate how you open instant whiteboard. So um, I'll go ahead and start from scratch. So let me quit Classflow Desktop. And I'll go ahead and back out of it. So when you're trying to start Classflow Desktop, I have it pinned to my home screen, to my, uh, my docking station down here. If you want to pin it to your docking station, you're welcome to. If not, you can search your machine. That's how you search in a Mac. If you're a Windows user, you can do something similar too. I believe it's the Windows uh, button down here. 
But when I click Classflow Desktop, it's going to pull open that, and now it's open, right? So the screen is orange still because it recognizes the fact that I was just in a session and I didn't log out. So if I log out, now the screen is gray or the ring around it is gray. Now it's taking a second for these to load. But someone was asking about how to launch a instant whiteboarding session. I'm gonna click this button once it loads and that will launch me right into an instant whiteboarding session. So I'm in the hamburger, I click on the hamburger, and then I click on the square with the squiggly line through it. And now I'm ready to go right from there into an instant whiteboarding session. So it's great if you have maybe a, a panel in the front of the classroom, or you're still uh, rolling with a Promethean board, or some type of front of the classroom display. It, it really uh, highlights that and accents that because you can write on it up at the front of the screen as well. All right, let's go back into the question and answer. All right, so if we don't have any questions, I'm going to keep moving on through um, this presentation. So I'm going to close out my instant whiteboard. Now, the nice thing about the desktop annotate is that you don't necessarily have to um, have anything prepared. It is true to its word, it's desktop annotation. So if I just pull up a picture, take this picture of one of my favorite TV characters of all time, Dwight Schrute. You're going to notice where he is on my screen. If I click the desktop annotate button, it's going to mirror my desktop. So now, as you notice, I'm sure I have this space over here, but I also have the picture right here. So now if I wanted to maybe put the correct punctuation here. I can change my line thickness, use my tools, and I can actually put a question mark instead of period. All right, and as I mentioned earlier, it's a continuous lesson, so I can come back into the blank screen I had initially from Instant Whiteboard, or I can come back to my desktop annotation. Now, if I wanted to save this, I would just save it like that click on the cogwheel, click save, and exit. Now, if you attended some of my previous sessions, you're going to notice, too, I, did, I talked about this earlier, but it's, you are not limited to, um, to uh, whatever's on your screen. So, or, or sorry, whatever's on the background of your desktop. You can use web pages if you want to. So, like, say that I wanted to pull up a um, map of the solar eclipse. Right, and I could pull that up. Uh, here. So I could pull up a map with a solar eclipse, and I could take this, and I could take a desktop, uh, I could desktop annotate over this, and I could maybe, so for example, me being from Chattanooga, I could, take this and I could look at it and I could maybe click on the screen and, and show the students where we are and where we could go to actually view the solar eclipse. If you notice, come in here, click the desktop annotate button. So, here is Chattanooga. Where I live, it's just on the edge, so we would have to travel probably about 10 miles north to be able to see the solar eclipse. So like I said, it, it, desktop annotates one of my favorite features in Classflow, especially in Classflow desktop, because you're not um, necessarily pigeonholed into using one specific teaching platform. You can use a PowerPoint, you can use PDFs, you can use web pages, anything like that. And the great thing about it is, is it, it causes or it creates a continuous lesson. So if you take a screenshot of something and then you have a teachable moment, you can add a new card and treat it like an instant whiteboarding session. All right, so what other questions do we have? I, have, I see some questions opening up in the chat. Um, as far as clickers and polling, um, 
the so with the polling feature, you have a lot more um, flexibility and a lot more tools at your disposal than with the clickers. So the clickers are kind of limited to as far as the, what type of questions you can ask and, and answer. But I can send out, and if you attend the polling polling seminar next, I can tell you about a little bit about the creative poll and um, and some of the different and the word seed and all the different options we have. So. When your students are logged in, Classflow is device agnostic, meaning anything that connects the internet will connect to Classflow. So your students are online, they have a lot more capability on whatever device they're on, whether that's a phone, a tablet, a Chromebook, whatever, that they can interact with. All right, let's see the chat. How did I go from desktop to online Classflow? Okay, that's a great question. So let me demonstrate that again. So if you click the cog or the hamburger wheel, on the hamburger wheel, you're going to have these different options. You're going to notice that the class or the polling feature, the send card, connect students, all of those are grayed out. So I'm going to click that little cog wheel and I'm going to click log in. So once I click log in, I'm going to enter in my password. And now I am orange. So now my Classflow desktop offline is talking to my Classflow online. I don't have any students connected to my class and I don't have a class session live. But if I wanted to go into the online version of Classflow, I click that button right there. And now it pulls up Classflow online. And so I can continue to navigate my presentation. That's the great part about the desktop annotate and instant whiteboard is that maybe you're missing a portion of your class flow lesson that you want to talk about whole group and you want to use both of these features for. You're welcome to do that. More questions in the chat. Uh, yes, yeah, so the student automatically gets the wait screen um, until the question was, do the students automatically have the wait screen um, on their device until you push some content to them? The answer to that is yes. So there's two ways to do this. You can either have a, a, um, a card to where it's auto sent to the student, or you can send it manually by clicking that send button, either through the wheel, or if you're delivering a lesson from online, you can do that as well. All right, let's see the chat. Sorry, I'm reading one of the questions. So the nice thing about this, um, the question was how to use this. I think if I'm understanding it correctly. If you keep it, like, so keep your, your, in the context of having a Promethean panel or a Promethean board. What that board and that panel are, is they're just an extension of what is going on in your, uh, on, on your computer screen. So if you want to deliver Classflow desktop on that border panel, you just deliver it on your computer screen and that will be, that will be coming, um, that will be in front of the class. I hope that answered your question. If not, you can um, ping me again and I'll try and, uh, I'll, I'll try and answer it uh, individually. Yeah, so, so that was a great question. Someone asked if building a lesson, are these backed up? So with Classflow being cloud-based, naturally when you, when you build a lesson online, they're all saved in the cloud. If you're building a lesson offline, so if you're building a lesson in Classflow desktop, I'm gonna log out here so I can show you in the gray session. Let's say that I wanted to save this as a lesson. I click save and it's gonna get saved locally on um, on my hard drive to what we call a .cfl file. So just new lesson, save it in my document. I'm gonna replace the old one. And then that's gonna be saved locally, so now I can access that at any time. I'm back in the question and answer. 
can you download an online lesson you save to your desktop? So that's a really easy feature that sometimes gets overlooked. So I'm gonna log into my, my uh, online account and I'm gonna show you that real quick. And I know I'm navigating a little bit away from the desktop annotate and the instant whiteboarding, but I wanted to make sure that I really could tailor this to, to whatever you need. So I have a few other things to go through as far as the desktop annotation and the instant whiteboarding, but I would rather be able to answer your questions as well. And I think you guys get the point as far as how desktop annotate can be used over top of anything and the instant whiteboarding feature is just a blank canvas. So as far as downloading a lesson online, so you're gonna notice here, this is my online Classflow account. I just went to class, my Classflow account. I went into my resources and let's take this lesson, for example. Inside the cog wheel, you're gonna be able to click that and you can click download. So now that's automatically gonna download as a .cfl file. So if I download that and I go to click on it, if you have Classflow Desktop open, it's just gonna automatically open up in there. So now this online lesson now has become my um, Classflow Desktop lesson. And you'll notice I'm still offline as well here. I'm gonna exit without saving there. All right, let's come back in here to these other questions. I think I got a couple more coming in the chat. Um, yeah, uh, so one of the question was, um, one of the questions was, does it work the same as desktop annotation from Active Inspire? Very similarly, you just get, uh, you get more tools. That's, that's kind of the, the long and short of it. it. You get more tools in my opinion. Um, how to go online from the wheel? Yes, yeah, sure, I can repeat that. Um, so if you click the hamburger meal, or the hamburger meal, you can tell I haven't had lunch yet, hamburger wheel, and then you click the settings cog right there. And then you click log in. So let me walk you through it again. Blank wheel, settings, log in. And then I type in my password. And now I'm now connected and I can just click that class flow button. I'm allowed to do that now. All right, let me see if I have any more questions. Um, somebody asked as far as how do you insert a PDF onto the whiteboard? Um, that's the nice thing about uh, in, or desktop annotators, you won't need to insert a PDF into a whiteboard lesson. You can just click the, you can pull up the PDF and you can click desktop annotate and annotate over top of that PDF. So you don't necessarily have to in, import it into an instant whiteboard lesson. All righty. Well, um, if the PDF was more than one page, then you would just, you would keep scrolling down on the PDF and, and you would create a continuous lesson. Because you think about it from, from a, a teaching standpoint, if you're wanting to annotate over top of the PDF, odds are, you would need that, like you would need those to be segmented into pictures. And so you could just, you could click desktop annotate, you could annotate over the portion of the PDF, and then you would come down here, go back to the PDF, scroll down to wherever you are, and then click desktop annotate again, it would take a screen capture of the next portion. So it's kind of like a continuous lesson. So guys, I'm, I really appreciate everybody showing up today. It was a packed house. Um, I really appreciate everybody's participation. Um, what we talked about today is we talked about how to use Instant Whiteboard, how you can engage your students with Instant Whiteboard just with not really having having anything prepared, um, just having kind of like the sparking of, a, of an idea that you want to roll with. We talked about Desktop Annotate and how you can use the great class flow tools on top of anything you bring up on your desktop. And I also showed you just a fraction of how to get your students um, logged in, to log on and to uh, pull them with, um, with the use of, of Classflow Desktop as well. So you can take those desktop annotations and pull your students. You can pull them on instant whiteboarding sessions. You don't necessarily have to have anything pre-made in Classflow. You can use your existing materials. So I hope you found that beneficial. I'm gonna pull up this lesson here.
And in the interest of time, I want to make sure that everybody has enough time to kind of maybe grab a bite to eat, maybe get some water or something like that. But I want to show you before you leave kind of some what's next for you. So what's next in after today? We have more sessions today. I'm sure a lot of you are getting, getting plugged in. You're going to attend more sessions. Go to those. Um, we have, I think we have three more sessions for the rest of the day. Um, you're also going to get a certificate of attendance. If you're not listening to this on a recording, you're going to get a certificate of attendance and you're going to get an hour credit for this for each session that you attend. Expect that within seven business days and you're also going to get a camp class flow playlist as well. Second part of that, register for more Classflow webinars. If you go to classflow.com slash events, you're going to have the option to attend more webinars. That's going to be great. Some of you are asking some lesson building um, questions. Some of you had other questions. We have constant, we have semi-monthly uh, webinars um, on Classflow that we can help get plugged in with, help get you plugged in with. So if we didn't answer your question today, odds are we're probably going to have a webinar on it coming up soon. And also, if we didn't answer your question, get social with us. Like us on, or on uh, Facebook. Tweet at us, at Classflow. Get social, hashtag at Camp Classflow 17. My Twitter handle is at Classflow underscore Jacob, so you can get connected with me. The last thing I want to offer you is also help and support. So with the help and support we have inside the cog wheel, so I'm clicking on the hamburger wheel now, you can click on help. And here are all the different options to get help. We have help videos. This connects you to our help, our Classflow help search engine and different ways to get in contact with us. I hope you all had an amazing day so far. I look forward to seeing you in the rest of the sessions. If you have any other questions, feel free to stick around and pop them in the chat. Um, if not, you're free to go and get prepared for the next session. You all have a great um, rest of your day. Bye.